Hello, hello, hello. Good hello. afternoon, Tammy. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. You're good. Thank you so much for joining us again for the second phase of this interview. My name is Olanike, and I people call me Nikki. I work for My Green Card Story as a writing consultant. My, uh, my Green Card Story, we have a lot of products. We help people with um, packaging their EB2 NIW petition. So we help them through the writing process of their cover letter and, you know, just holding their hands throughout the process. So we might not write your cover letter for you, but we can help you to answer to your RFE. We can help, we can just hold a consultation service with you for an hour where we talk through the entire process or help you look through your package if you have it ready and you know just help people through this entire process so that's what we do at my at, at my green card story and if you don't think that you need this video, you can pass it on to someone who needs it. So you know a student in the United States or a professional in any country outside the United States that is trying to come through the EB2 NIW and become a permanent resident in the United States, you can share this video with them. So today, I have the pleasure of talking with Tammy again. We have another video where Tammy told us about our EB2 NIW application. In that video, she shared with us how she thought she was eligible for this process, how she thought she met all the prongs and everything USCIS wanted for this category of the US green card and made a petition. She also shared with us how she got an RFE. So an RFE request for further evidence was given to Tammy when she applied for I-140. That's the first stage of this process. And she approached my green card story and we helped her to walk through the RFE process. She submitted another application or a response to that RFE. And today she's going to be telling us how that entire process went and she will take us through what it looks like for someone who got an RFE to eventually change their status and become green card holders in the United States. So I know a lot of people will be coming on YouTube to look for this kind of video because they've just been heartbroken by the response from the USCIS with an RFE. But Tammy is here to tell you if she could do it, you can do it. So stay tuned with us. Tammy, I know you've introduced yourself in our first video, but please just introduce yourself briefly again and tell our listeners who you are and um your profession, what you do, and how you got here, how you got to be a green card holder. Hey, um, hi everybody. My name is Tammy. Um, I'm a data analyst currently, and um, I moved to the US in 2019. I did a master's. Um, I did two master's degrees actually, and I submitted my original EB2 NIW application in 2021. And finally got approved in, um, got an RFE in 2022 mm. and finally got approved in 2022 as well. And then finally got my green card in 2023. Wow. That's yeah. been a journey, girl. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Yes, it takes a lot of guts to go through all of that ad break. <laughs> so today, like I said, we are going to be going from when you got the RFE, and, you know, you contacted us at my green card story and we walked with you through the RFE response um, process. And then tell us from that point, you, you submitted, I guess, just tell us from after you worked with us and mm -hmm. we did whatever magic we did. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then what, what now happened? Um, yes. So, um, I worked with your team, um, submitted a reply to the RFE that they sent, added like more evidence, um, replied to each part of the RFE, the Thank document. You, like every, that is very yeah. important. So every point they raised in the request for further evidence, you addressed each of them. 
okay yes so like every point they had was a header in my reply so i put i copied and pasted their actual um message and then replied it just like that mm -hmm. till the end of the of the um letter i added like all of the extra evidence that i wanted to and then i submitted in September I would like to say like mid-September or end of September of 2022 and then um I got approved in November 2022. Oh okay so I don't know if you remember this detailed but some people would have the question Tammy if the UC USCIS did not ask me for a particular part of my cover letter. They didn't ask for further evidence. Should I address that as well on my response? If they didn't ask for what? So for example, you know, as the cover letter has different parts, mm -hmm. the proposed endeavor part, the national importance part, the substantial merit part, the mm -hmm. well-positioned part, mm -hmm. and the on the balance part. Those are mm -hmm. the parts of the cover letter. And yeah. you know how we try to address all of those five part sections. Yeah. If the USCIS said only they didn't understand your proposed endeavor or they didn't understand how you're well positioned, but they did not ask you for the national importance. They did not ask you for the unbalanced parts. They didn't request further ev evidence for those parts. Should you still provide evidence or leave out that part and just answer to the one they asked? Um, I'm going to leave it to the professionals to answer that, but I can state like what I... I did Eight. in my letter. So for me, actually, they asked for all the parts because the, the, the issue that they had with my with my um Initial application petition, was, yes. was the proposed endeavor. Like they were not sure about my proposed endeavor. And that affects all the, the all other the parts. five parts that you just talked about. So I had to reply for all of those parts. Okay. But I would say, even if they didn't ask for it, like this is your last chance to prove prove anything to them so maybe like it doesn't take so much from you to like try and revamp whatever you had initially just make it better and resubmit i think but i'm not sure i'm not a professional in that so okay, maybe but that was exactly yeah. what you did yes, yes yes i answered for everything okay yeah. so you submitted tell me mm -hmm. continue so you submitted yes. and so i submitted and um Initially, I was worried that it would now take another one year again. But apparently, if you had, like, whenever you start your initial process, whatever priority priority date they give you at first, that's what your priority Carry date will on. be until the end of your process. So I submitted the reply to the RFE in September, but my priority date was September of 2021 that I submitted the original one. So Initially. I think that's what made, um, and even in the RFE, they had stated that if you submit your RFE, we would reply you within like 60 days or so. They stated it there. Mm -hmm. So I think all of that made it quite fast. So they replied me quite fast as well. Yeah. Nice, nice. And yeah, I got the, the um, approval and then I went ahead to do the um, adjustment of status Part. I submitted that part in December. Um, and then I got um also to do like a biometrics appointment. I did that in January. And I was so sure that because of my priority date that was like two years, I did that in January 2023. I was so sure that my priority date that was like two years before, like September 2021, that my green card is coming like the next month. But I waited and I finally got it in June of 2023. Okay. So that was like a six-month timeline as yes. well. Yeah. Whoa, thank you, thank you, thank you. I like how you just, you know, talked about everything at a stretch. That is giving anybody watching this video the, the confidence that even if you got an RFE, it doesn't stall the whole process. It doesn't yeah. make you stay longer. Don't worry. The priority date is still the priority date, okay? Yes. And yeah. the process will go the way it was supposed to go, sincerely. So thank you so much. I just wanted to take you back a little bit more. So yes. for you who got an RFE, when you were, when you were applying for a change of status, mm -hmm. uh, do you think... I, I, 
I know, but do you think anything showed that you were uh, maybe a, a return customer or someone who got an RFE? Did you think there was anything that showed that you ever got an RFE? Nothing like that. All they need from you is your approval letter. And yes. that's, that's the same whether you got an RFE or, or it not. was from your original, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you so much. So when you were changing your status now, did you do that by yourself? And what gave you the confidence? I know you I know you like to say like that's my last last chance, so whatever. But what gave you the confidence to like do that by yourself or did you use any services? Was it even necessary? So that's the change of status part now. Yeah, um, this change of status part wasn't as hard as the, it was just the form that I needed to fill. But based on the relationship I already had with my great card story, <laughs> I did it myself, but then the few times I would just like send an email to just confirm yeah. some of the things that I needed to, to oh. some of the things that I wasn't sure of, but it's kind of a straightforward process. Like you fill the form, you have to do like medicals, then add everything and submit. So it's more straightforward than the original application. Thank you. Thank you. So that is brilliantly said. Um, so the relationship with my green card story enabled you to just check in a little bit with us and say, oh, am I correct with this form and things like that. Brilliant. Yeah. Thank you so much. So my next question, we're coming almost to the end of this video is tell me when you got your green card what was it like oh okay prior to getting the green card tell me the process did you get your ead first and then got your green card or you got the two together what was it like for you because it's always so, different for each person yeah so my my status before i submitted and everything was f1 so I was already done with my master's program. So I already had my OPT EAD Morning. card because mm -hmm. I was already I was already working. So I had that. But when I was doing my change of status, I submitted for EAD and green card because my <laughs> OPT EAD was expiring soon. But when they replied me, I didn't get any EAD. I just got the, the green card straight. So I think they canceled that initial application because the green card was ready nice nice and you said that was like everything happened in six months so yes. so tell me um I know a lot of people also have this question for you were you were you required to submit the medical report or you submitted everything together did you ever make any mistake like that no. okay no no um I didn't make any mistake I just as part of the change of adjust, mm -hmm. adjustment of status yeah. um, application, you have to go to a medical expert. Yes. They will do their own forms and then give you a sealed envelope. Yes. They did an interview there as well. It's not anything serious. They just ask, well, when did you come? Have you been healthy? All the time, like very basic questions. And then I added it to, so it was just one submission that I did. And okay. that was it. Yes. Yeah, and then they, they reached out for me to go and do biometrics yes. at yes. their um center. And yes. that was that was the next step. And then from then it was just waiting until the approval. So I got the approval in June. Um I saw I saw it online in like I think June 13 or so. And then about a few a few days later, I saw that they were producing the card. And about like one week later, and later I had the card in my meal. Whoa. Okay. Before we, I have two more questions. Okay. <laughs> um. So, so tell me, what would you tell someone who is out there and just got that, that letter about their RFE? What would you say to them? I'll say it's not the end of the world. I think... An RFE any day is better than a rejection, like because they're giving you a second chance. That's how I just told myself about like, thank God they gave me an RFE and not a bye bye. Is done. Don't even, don't even try to talk to again. again. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So think of it as a good thing. It's a second chance. 
if there was anything that you you wished you had added in your initial um, petition, this is the time for you to add it. And as much as possible, if you can seek professional help after you get an RFE, please just do it because it actually takes that working with you guys took a lot of weight, of like a lot of pressure, right? Because yeah. I knew that I was working with professionals and they would help me do all like the thinking that I needed to like put into this work. So it's not the end of the world. Just try your best. Just submit it. You don't know what might happen. Just do it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. You kind of answered my last question along with that, which is like seeking professional um help or advice. Mm -hmm. So so I'm going to have to look for another question. <laughs> which <laughs> is which is yeah if you if you put yourself like back two years ago 2021 mm -hmm. before you started this petition yeah. what would you have told yourself so don't don't mention about working with professionals that's not it i just okay. want you to a student out there or someone who is just here for their masters they're trying to get that masters as a proof of eligibility for this route, what would you tell them? I would say, even for someone that's just even starting their master's, mm -hmm. I would say, and you have this in mind, I would say try to look at the requirements for this um, EB2 and IW mm -hmm. and start working towards those things. Like okay. they value when people go for conferences and present at conferences, they value when you have papers and citations. If I knew about this um, EB2 and IW when I started my master's, I would have started doing all of those things earlier so that I can start gathering all of the evidence and everything that I needed to make my case, right? So I think that's what that would just be my advice. Like, it's something that you already know what they need. And if it's something that you can do, just start doing all those small things and make sure that you are collecting proof of everything. Because even if you tell them, oh, I went to a conference, if you don't have any evidence to back it up, like a picture of when you were there or an email, like you need to start collecting all your proof and everything. And I would say just try your best. If this is if this is what God God wants for you, it's yes. a compromise, but you still have to do your own part and like do the work to make you eligible for for you know the approval so okay. you've got this so we're <laughs> closing and thank you everyone please subscribe to our channel and Tammy is going to be leaving us with the juice of the advantage of being a green card holder the US green card okay Oh, that what would you say is the peck or what are the pecks what's the advantage of following this route. I know the one that jumps at everybody's, I don't want to go back home without the US experience. I want to be eligible to work and all of that. But for you, what was the big plus? I think the big plus for me would be, you know, the restrictions that we're taking off. Like right now I can work in any field that I want to. And like the proposed endeavor that I had mentioned earlier, like I can do it without any restrictions, right? I think that was the big thing for me. Like I can move from one company to another if I want to. I don't have to wait for a company to like file for me. I can actually be of good value to the country now that I don't have any of those restru restrictions, restrictions anymore. And then like, it's very nice to travel. And when you're coming back, you're on a different line. There's that. <laughs> <laughs> oh lord <laughs> there's that as well and i think there's also a lot of peace of mind and like you can you can now like start a business if you want to come buy a house easily like there are so many things that it helps you to be able to do that you can't really do when you're like in the f1 status so i think that's it for me just a lot of freedom to actually make an impact where where you want to I think that that's really it for me Thank you so, so much again, Tammy, for sharing your story with us. And for our listeners, thank you. If you have any questions, 
you can reach out to us you can put you can comment under this video and just put down your questions if you have any questions for Tammy as well you can put the, the, the questions down here in the comment below so thank you everyone and see you later bye, bye.